American bombers winging toward Japanese targets on Sador in the South Pacific. A dramatic close-up of the terrific low-level attacks that soften enemy bases preliminary to amphibious assault. Northeast of New Guinea, in the middle of the Bismarck Sea, the Admiralty Islands have been occupied by Japan since the last war. Now Manus, largest of the group, with Los Negros at the tip, is shelled by American warships. Landing on Los Negros, Mechanized United States cavalrymen surprised the enemy with a powerful striking force. Begun as a reconnaissance, the operation now develops into full-scale invasion of the island. wounded are brought back under fire. Cautiously, troops move up against Japanese defending the airfield. By rifle fire and hand grenade, the enemy is exterminated. Momoti airfield is taken. Jap planes destroyed before they ever left the ground. In a matter of hours, the Navy's engineers bring ashore heavy equipment and have the airstrip ready for American planes. Another vital base from which to strike and encircle the Japanese on nearby Rabaul. General Stilwell, fighting in the jungles of Burma, observes wounded being brought into a frontline field hospital. Here, amid some of the world's wildest terrain and under constant fire from Jap snipers, Lieutenant Colonel Gordon Seagrave, called the Burma Surgeon, carries on his job of saving human life. Faithful Burmese nurses, seasoned members of Seagrave's staff, have worked with the doctor since the Japanese invasion of Burma in 1942. Burmese and their allies working hand in hand to save an embattled people. High above the more inaccessible regions of Burma, giant transport planes carry food and equipment to outposts that can be reached only by air. Over the Naga Hills on the Burma-India border, packs are dropped by parachute with amazing accuracy. Another outpost, high on a narrow mountain ridge. A small target, but the supplies land right on the spot. At Bougainville in the Solomon Islands, Fiji troops fighting with the United Nations forces deep in the interior must also be served by air transport. By radio, they contact the supply plane. The chutes land almost on top of the camp. No outpost is too remote for these supply trains of the air. on Curaçao, 40 miles off the coast of Venezuela, turns out to greet a royal visitor, Princess Juliana of the Netherlands.
the princess makes an extensive tour of Curacao's 210 square miles. Dutch Marines form an honor guard. Flags of the United Nations pass in a review staged for the princess at the sports stadium. Here, many miles from her homeland, Juliana walks again upon free Dutch soil. Spring 1944, a Nazi-occupied Europe looks to the skies, for the Allied air offensive is on in earnest. Already its shadow is upon the enemy. From a Britain now bristling with airdromes, Allied squadrons are working round the clock. Day and night, their roaring propellers are being heard over Nazi Europe. These are marauders, swift medium bombers capable of speeding at more than 300 miles an hour. Their jobs to hit specific military installations and airports. Steel helmets and steel jackets protect the crews from anti-aircraft fire. For now, they're over the enemy coast, driving into a flak-filled sky. Mission for today, a Nazi airfield in Holland. 500-pound demolition bombs landing directly on the target. Bound for home. In 39 days, British and American air forces have dropped more than 37,000 tons of bombs on German war industries. The offensive has cost the Allies in planes and men. Even now, those flares indicate wounded aboard, and ground crews anxiously watch as their comrades return. Landing gear damaged, this one comes in on its belly, and well done. German air losses have been greater than two to one. In 39 days, more than 170,000 American fighting men such as these have been in action over Germany. Nearly 16 mechanized divisions taking the war to the heart of the enemy. Here above the clouds they make for the French invasion coast, for Nazi installations guarding the shoreline. Over the target it's bombs away, bombs that are steadily reducing the production of Nazi war supplies, bombs that are crippling the production of Nazi warplanes, bombs that are smashing their factories wherever they may be. This is a sample of the round-the-clock bombing that today is shaking the very foundations of Germany itself. <laughs> 